what better way to start the weekend than by doing some nighttime leak coding? And that's exactly what I'm going to do today. It's nighttime here where I'm at. I want to do a quick introduction and then get right to it. As many of you may know, this is my channel where I upload these Reddit streams to. I have a couple of videos now that I've been curating for these past six days. And also now I created a channel introduction. That way you can just watch this and sort of get a brief summary as to why I'm doing this in the first place. So I'll let this video do the talking instead of me doing it again now. I'm also going to link to the channel in case anyone is curious and wants to watch these videos after the fact. You can go ahead and do it at your own pace. And I think that's going to make it very nice. So I had a goal of getting to 50 questions before I rewarded myself. And that reward is coming in the form of a Blue Yeti microphone, a Blue Yeti USB microphone that I'm getting tomorrow. I've been mainly recording with my headset, which as I'm sure some of you have heard already, it's not the best thing to listen to. I know it's a little bit choppy at times, but I do appreciate everyone sticking around and listening to it to me, even though it does sound this way. So hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to have some crisp audio. So in the last stream, we left off on 44 questions. There was one question that I got to that might be the first one I skip only because I there's just one thing I really have to think about before putting it. I, I feel like if I do this, it might take the whole stream. Maybe not, it might be easier, but I, I suspect that this is a new question that because it's so new, it's marked as easy. It might be a harder easy than it lets, lets on to be. But you know, we'll get there when we get there. So we're going to start right now with truncate sentence. And I really hope I can do six questions to get to that 50. That way, that microphone tomorrow is justified. All right, so let's get to it. So truncate sentence. And let me put a link to this question on the chat for anyone that wants to follow along and do it with me. So a sentence is a list of words that are separated by a single space with no leading or trailing spaces. Each of the words consists of only uppercase and lowercase English letters, no punctuation. For example, hello world, hello, and hello world, hello world are all sentences. Okay, you're given a sentence S and an integer K. You want to truncate S such that it contains only the first K words. Return S after truncating it. Okay, so it has no leading or trailing spaces, and at the end of every single space is one word. So let's sort of quickly go over this. I'm just gonna have a sip of water, so I'll be silent for a couple seconds. Remember to drink your water if you're not drinking enough water. Okay, so let's see. The input string is hello, how are you, contestant? Something that I've been doing more of, which sounds obvious, but it really does help, is just planning it out before I start coding, right? So we know that K is four. So to me, it sounds like I want some output array. I could probably just get to, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, do I really need to create an output array or can I just slice it at the, let's see, one, two, three. Like if I get to one space, that's one. If I get to two, if I get to three, and then when I get to the fourth space, there should be four words. Let's see this one. What is the solution to this problem? One, two, three, four, and then I can slice up to here. Now, chopper is not a tanuki. K is five. One, two, three, four. Okay. So if we if we make it to the end of the array, if we make it to the end of the array, then let's see. I guess we can just return no leading or trailing spaces. The words in N are separated by a single space. One, K is in the range one through the number of words in S. So one, two, three, four. We are, if we made it to the end, then we're just one underneath K. So we should probably just return the entire, the entire word. That's what I would think. So let's see. Let number of spaces equal zero. For let i equals zero, i less than s dot length, i plus plus, if s at i equals a space, we'll do number of spaces plus plus, if number of 
spaces is equal to k. I'm fine with just doing s dot slice s dot slice from zero to i. Right, because at this moment when we get to again, let's say we're we're over here. Like what is the solution to this problem? Right, so number of spaces right in the beginning is zero. We're here at i, we got to our first our first place here. I number of spaces is one. That's not equal to k, so we keep going, it's two. Not equal to k, so we keep going, it's three. Not equal to k, so we keep going. Here it's four. It's equal to k. So then we return that. Cool. Now let's say we get let's say k was something like I don't know uh, seven. We get to five. Not equal to k. We get to six. It's not equal to k. Come all the way over here, and then now we're out here. I think here we can say if and what do we return if not? Like will it ever be should we just return the string here? If k is equal to, no, I'm sorry, if number of spaces plus 1 is equal to k, return s. And I'm going to do something kind of dumb here, kind of redundant, but I'm going to return s anyway and just see what happens. Make sure to set this back to 0. So we have. Hello, how are you? Chopper is not a tanuki. Let's think about this though. If we have an input string that's a, and k is equal to one, or it's zero, we never make it, it's still number of spaces less than. So like I wonder if I can just return s at the end. I'll either return a truncated string or I'll just return the entire string. I think that could be a way of doing it. And I'm fine with using the slice method because I could construct an array as I'm going along, but why not just like slice it? Then I don't really have, well, let's submit it and then we can talk about it. Okay, 58.55. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with this because the first thing I was thinking about doing was I was almost thinking about creating output, something like this. And then anytime I see a space, having to keep track of like multiple pointers or something and slice this string and slice this and slice this, that seems a little more complex. I like the ability of this just to slice. And let's see if we can look up the time complexity, like MDN slice time complexity. Slice is the only linear Slice is only linear if the number to be taken is unknown. So this is nice. The ECMA specification does not specify a bounding complexity. However, you can derive one from the specifications algorithm. Slice is linear where end is end minus start. Not a tremendous amount of optimization opportunity here without significantly slowing down writes to both arrays. Slice is O of n. Okay, so for all intents and purposes, slice is O of n. So we're really here. We're going through, like, we're only doing this once. So we're going through n. I'm, I'm, like, would this be, we only do this once. So it's not, it can't be n squared, right? We get up to a certain n, and then we just plus n again. So I think I'm fine with saying this is overall linear time complexity with a constant space time complexity. Unless if we have to if we have to generate a new array for slice, maybe we can take that to be a linear space complexity. So I also want to anyone that's watching, I'm also going to link to this is a nice nice question here, nice answer to a good question. I'll link this to in case anyone wants to see it. I might actually start keeping track of the different resources that I pull up during my during my streams because they could be they could be good. I think they could be good for people to, to watch or read. Cool. Let's move on to the next one. We have now check if the sentence is a is pangram. Huh. 
Okay, a pangram is a sentence where every letter of the English alphabet appears at least once. Turn true if sentence is a pangram or false otherwise. Let's see. Okay, I think I already know how we can do this. Sentence consists of lowercase letters. So this is where we can take advantage. So check out the bounds, right? The bounds here are sentence consists of lowercase English, well, lowercase English letters, which means that we can automatically create like a fixed size array. A great question to ask your interviewer. If you have, if you know, like you say, hey, like, is this bounded by lowercase English letters? And they say yes, then perhaps a good way for us to start here will be const alphabet equals new array 26 where I fill everything with zero. Here's my plan. I have an array of 26, and as I'm going through the sentence, I'm gonna find the corresponding index. I'm gonna normalize the index so that it maps to an, a position in this array, and I'll increase it by one. And then at the end, I'll just make sure that every single index, every single item in this array is at least one. It might be more, but they all have to be used at least once, just like it says. And we can do, we can use a couple of nice methods here to get that done for us. So. Let's go to our, through our sentence. So for const c, I normally use const c to denote character. For const c of sentence, one of the nice ways to get the character code in JavaScript and to normalize it. So I believe, let's see, lowercase a is 97, right? So we can do const car code, or really we want const index equals c dot car code at zero minus 97. In case you don't know what car code at is, let's look this up and I'll also link to that. I'll keep track of this and I'll link it to the YouTube video once I'm done. So the car code at method returns an integer between 0 and 6535, representing the UTF 16 code unit at the given index. And I think that's 2, let's hope, yeah, 2 to the power of 16. Okay. Not sure that's even that helpful, but let me take a note of this and I'll put it in my links so we can watch it later. So this is gonna help us get the car code at the position zero of the string that we give it. C is a string with a single character. So the index at zero would be the character itself, minus 97 to normalize it, which means like for lowercase a, lowercase a already has the decimal value of 97, so minus 97 will make it zero, and that would fit nicely into our alphabet. So here we can say alphabet at index plus or equals one. And then we can return alphabet. This is already an array. So we can say alphabet for every alpha, let's say alpha greater uh, equal to one. Let's see what this gives us. True and true. I ran it too quickly. False, true, false, let's submit it. And then we'll go 15.78, see if we can do better, 64.32. So how do we, what's like, how's this working, right? Imagine that every single, I'll just put some of them here. Right, but you can imagine that index 0 corresponds to this, A, index 1 to B, index 2 to C, index 3 to D, so on and so forth, right? We would continue this all the way. So really at the end, we're going to have some of these that are used maybe once, maybe some of these are used three times, others are used once. And what this every method on arrays is going to do in JavaScript is it's going to run this callback function for every single element inside of the array. And as soon as it's falsely, it terminates. So it doesn't even run through the whole thing. So it terminates early for us. And if it's true for everything, it will return true, which is essentially what we want to know. Everything is used at least once. So I think this is a nice solution to this question. It's very easy to read. We can go ahead and read the discussions. Simple solution, no set, no map. C++ set solution. Put all the characters in a set. Return if the size of the set equals 26. Yeah, we can return it earlier if we like. I think that's also fine. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Let's see, this is no set or map. It's one of those things. I mean, this is this is nice, right? Scene is 126i. Explanation for beginners. 
Instead of using array or set, here, the int bits are used to mark if the alphabet has already occurred or not. Say when we counter the characters A, B, and J, we will change the first, second, and tenth bits to one. That's very nice. Then we iterate over all characters of input and change them to the integer value. Here, bitwise left shift operator will shift the first bit of one to left by CI places. Okay. Now you can see when we take or, we come one, which is used to indicate this alphabet has occurred. Scene equals scene. Okay. And then we just return. What what do they return at, at the end? One shifted int scene. If scene equals to one. Shift it to the left 26 times, minus 1. And what does that give us exactly? Let me just like do this here real quick. Oh. Minus 1. Scene is last. Scene was something like, now we have encounter D. Do the work now scene changes it shows cd have occurred at the end if the number becomes 0, 0, 0, 1, 26 ones that means all alphabets have occurred at least once now once 26 means to shift the first bit of one left by 26 places then it will denote 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 26 zeros after one will denote zero and equals one zero zero return true. It works here because we have 26 alphabets. So return true if all alphabet have occurred at least once. So if scene is equal to it, it means that alphabet occurred at least once. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, this is, um, it's good to know. Bit sets are interesting to use. Again, I, like, I'm not too concerned of thinking that I should know how to do this in an interview. If I can talk about it and sort of show like, oh, hey, using a bit set might give us constant space complexity, I think that'd be pretty neat. Definitely will give you brownie points, no doubt. However, personally, I think that readability goes a long way, and I think something like this is a little more practical. Now, you know, if you're running this millions and billions of times, the space complexity might help. I guess it also depends on the context. That's just my two cents, but I'd love to hear what you all have to say. Let's move on to the next one. So count asterisks. I love that we've been getting a lot of nice, high quality questions, so that's good. You're given S, you're given a string S where every two consecutive vertical bars are grouped into a pair. In other words, the first and second make a pair, the third and fourth make a pair, return the number of asterisks uh, okay, return the number of asterisks in S, excluding the, okay, wait, what, <clears throat> so like, this is a pair, there's two here, this is a pair, and there's two here, we consider characters are underlined, L and C, O, oh, That's one pair, two pair, three, four. To each return the pair, return the number of in S, excluding the asterisks between each pair. Not that, not that each will belong to exactly one pair. So that's, this is one pair. This is another pair, or oh, this is one pair, and this is one pair. I see, I see, I see. Okay. So can we, you know what? I might be able to, I think I know what I can do here. Pairs are always going to be like, there'll be one opening, pair two, one closing. So we might be able to count the pairs at any time. We've just, if we've just seen a closing one, we can count the asterisks until we see the next opening one. What does that mean? <clears throat> Let's say we start here at I and we say, okay, 
um, the current or uh, opening, I don't know, like pair, pairs, pair equals zero. We come to, we come to a vertical bar and pair is zero. So now pair is one. So for any of these asterisks, we cannot count them because we're currently inside of an open pair. We get to the next closing one, and if pair is one, we close it. And now we continue moving I. Now we can count these because we're closed. Get to the next one, do pair. So I think I think that's I think that could work. So let's see, I think we can say let asterisks equal zero and let pairs or let pair equal zero for const c of s so if let's see if pair if pair equals really the differentiator is if pair is equal to zero else if pair equals to one so if pair equal to zero and c is equal to asterisk right if it's zero and it's equal to an asterisk we can count asterisks plus plus. Now let's think about this though. If pair equal to zero, I don't think we need. To, I don't think we want to do an and right here. I don't. Yeah, I don't think we want to do this and right here. There's a couple different things that can happen, right? Let's let's go to this whole thing again. Word i and pair is equal to zero. Now we get to one of these. So I think if, if I think really maybe we want to first check if c is equal to this vertical bar, what do we do? First thing we want to do is if pair c. Okay, that lines things up nicely. So if the pair is currently closed, then let's make pair equals not pair. And same with here pair equals not pair. So we're toggling them here, right? So if pair is equal to zero, pair equals not pair, else if pair is equal to one, pair equals pair. Okay. So now let's say we get to one of these. If C, if pair equals zero, all right. Now, if C equals asterisk and pair equals zero and asterisks plus plus return asterisks uh, sort of a quick solution but let's work through it and see what we can get okay so we're at the first one c right now is not a vertical bar and it's not an asterisk so let's go to the next one so c equals vertical bar and pair is zero, so we're gonna set pair equal to one. It's not an asterisk, so we continue. Not a vertical bar, but it is it it is an asterisk, but pair is one, so we do nothing. We continue, another asterisk, pair is one, we do nothing, continue, continue, continue. Now we get again to a vertical bar. If pair equals zero, no it's not. But pair is one, now we make it zero. Not an asterisk we would continue it's an asterisk and pair is zero so we increase the asterisk another asterisk pair is zero we get to the next one pair is zero we make this one get to an asterisk but it's one now what happens if because one thing we haven't done here is let's put let's see every two considered vertical bars are grouped into a pair Excluding in between each pair. So if I have some here in the front and I have some here in the back, is this valid? I am a programmer. Okay. Are these like pair is zero? I guess it would work the same here. Let's try this longer example here. We should get five. You are beautiful. All right, so we're at pair equals zero. All right, 
one here, pair equals to one, no asterisks. Come over here, pair equals to zero, asterisk, asterisk, so it's two, right? Pair equals one, pair equals zero. We have three, okay, so I'm, I'm curious to see how this goes here. Let's see what we got on code. Zero and two, did I mess up somewhere here? Really? Maybe maybe this not pair thing is a uh, one equal. Well, I'm gonna say, oh wait a second. Yeah, definitely don't want to don't want to do that. Now can we do? Yeah, let's just do if it's zero, pair equals one, and if it's one, pair equals zero. We're not toggling it so as much as we're doing. All right, so two, two. Let's run this one. Two zero five two zero five. Let's run it. Fifty point eighty one. Uh, can we do something a little better here? We can say pair equals. Uh, pair is equal to zero. You can say one or zero. If pair equal to zero, if pair is equal to zero, we'll make it one. Else, just leave it at zero. All about condensing the code, right? Two zero five. Still getting the same thing here. 86.84, we make this even like this. Can we actually, we might be able to, um, I was gonna maybe suggest using reduce, but I think that might just make things look nasty. Okay, so I'm happy with this. Let's see what discussions have to say, one pass. My complexity bars bars at modulo two. That Python one liner is the most Pythonic thing I've ever seen. Yeah, it's about the same sentiment. I'm not too concerned here. So it's gonna be a linear time complexity because we're having to iterate over every single character in S and then a constant space complexity. So I think those are pretty good odds right there. Cool, let's get to our next one. Maximum product difference between two pairs. Let's see. The product difference between two pairs A, B, and C, D is defined as A times B minus C minus D. For example, the product difference between 5 and 6 and 2. Um, choose four distinct indices such that the product difference between pairs is maximized. So if I want a maximal difference, I should choose one really big number and one really small number. That's what I think, right? Because a really big number minus, this, no, no, I'm sorry, I should pick, yeah. Yeah, 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 like 93 minus two, no. Maybe I want and what am I even talking about? If I want the maximum difference between two numbers, like 93 minus 60, for example, or 90 minus 60 is 30, 90 minus 70 is 20, 90 minus 60 is 30, 50 is 40, 90 minus 2, this is 34, this is 64. So do we just want like two big numbers? Let's come up with all this. So five, let's just, yeah, um, this is one of those, like I'm, it's like a tongue twister here. If I picked the two biggest numbers, right? Um, seven and six and five and four, or six and seven and two and four, which is what they did. They did the two biggest numbers minus the two smallest numbers. So I think if we just do a sort, I think we can sort and then do, let's see, 
yeah, big number and then a small number. So we can do const sorted nums equals nums dot sort a b a minus b and then do we just return let's let's do something here um sorted nums and here we can do sorted nums dot length minus one times sorted nums sorted nums dot length minus two let me break this up a little bit here return sorted nums of sorted nums dot length minus one times sorted nums sorted nums time uh dot length minus two minus sorted nums at zero times sorted nums at one Is it not like this? Uh, is it not like this whole thing that I'm doing here? Maybe I don't even need this. I'm making this harder on myself. Long expression. You guys remember long cat? Instead of long cat, long expression. Let's see. All right. Submit that. 86.74. So the bottleneck here is the sort. We know that in Chrome V8 engine, it's quick sort that's implemented. So it's going to be an ON log N. That's the bottleneck. Space complexities, or whatever the space complexity that quick sort uses underneath, which I forget how much quick sort space complexity. Space complexity, worst case. So log n of extra space. And then complexity and log n. So I guess log n, log n of space complexity for quick sort and then n log n for time complexity. Is there some like amazing, yeah, O of n, O of n, O n log n without sorting? Can we think of a way to do it without sorting? Oh, yeah. No, we definitely can. We definitely can. I think what we can do. Yeah, we just need. I don't necessarily want. I want the two smallest numbers and the two biggest numbers. How do I know? I mean, the whole time I can always be getting the smallest and then I can be getting the biggest. Like if I go through this whole thing, I could do that. I suppose. Let's see. Numbers that sort. Yeah, this is interesting. for n in nums if n is less than or equal to min dot one, if else if min two, if n is greater than max. But here they're not float for n in nums. Oh, nums is an array. Man, that makes it a lot easier. Okay. I almost thought I had to do that trick where I'm like picking digits off the number as I go along in a while loop. But yeah, I guess we can just have variables that it's like almost a planko where the little disk falls into place, something like that, where we're updating the variables as we go along, keeping track of the min and the max. Something like that could work out well. I'm okay with this answer here, but I think at least the fact that we mentioned it, you all watching will hopefully have some uh, intuition behind that. All right, so count good triplets. I vaguely remember this question, and I think, oh, it does not have a good rap at all. But real quick, we started at 44, and we're at, wow, we've done four questions already. Pretty amazing. 
given an array of integers r and three integers a, b, and c, you need to find the number of good triplets. A triplet r, i, r, j, r, k is good if the following conditions are true. Okay. A7. Uh, what? A7. Oh, okay, wait. JK. Okay, so three, zero, and one. And these are the indices. Zero, one, two, three, zero, and one. To find the number of good triplets. Zero is less than i, less than j. Okay, so these are never. Oh, three, zero, one, I guess. Oh, and then three, zero, one, three, one, one, and zero, one, one. And why is that? If I subtract the distance is less, that is some crazy explanation. So and C is less than I and K is less than or equal to C. So the distance between this is three, that's less than seven. Distance between this is less than two, and the distance between three and one is two, and that's less than or equal to three. Okay. So this is an interesting question. I, I sort of see why it hasn't fared good. It was a little bit hard to understand. But let us think about this. We have i, we have j, we have k. At some point, we want to ask ourselves, is, like, as long as all these three are less, that's OK, and less than each other, like they said here, and these three things are true, that's fine. So what if I were to increase k first? k, I can say, hey, that's good, right? And then if I increase k to 9, let's see, 3, that's still 3. 0 to 9 is not less than that. So now I should try and satisfy b. j minus k is less than or equal to b, which is 2. This is 1. See, like, when do you stop, though? 1, 3, 1, 1. Oh, wait, 3, 0, 1. And then 3, 0, 1. OK. The next one, this can also be very similar to the question I had before, where I looked at the, yeah, we can, can we look at numbers that we've previously seen? Like, would that help at all in here? Let me put my air conditioning on, one second. It's getting hot in this house. I like it really cold at night, so it's pretty nice. I'm sure I live in I live in Florida, so it's very hot. So I really gotta make sure I'm cranking up that AC, especially when I'm going through these leak code questions. So three zero one. Could this be like a sliding window sort of deal? When would I know to slide the other pointers? Because like if I go here, okay, that's too far. So what do I stay here? It's like I say, oh hey, let me try this one. No, that that doesn't that that breaks the condition. So do I go back and then I'm like, well, let's increase J. Hey, J works, so that's cool. If I increase J again, it's an equal K. So it's like, do I now do zero one one? That seems a little bit. That seems odd. What else could I ask myself at every point, though? 
I need at least three numbers. So if I start saying like three at zero, uh, zero at one, like at any point, like let's say I get to, let's say I get to this I right here. There's nothing really that I can say, hey, have I seen a number that is less than, yeah, that, that kind of breaks everything. Three, a three-pointer technique here might work. And I also don't see sorting as a possibility. Because if I had zero, one, one, three, turn the number of good. Oh, it only cares. It only cares. Huh. It doesn't care about the form. Just cares that they exist. But maybe it needs to be this way. So if C, like if C is the outer one, zero, two, three, like if this is satisfied, um, zero, one, two, three, or we just find a spot. Wait a second. Like C, C needs to definitely be true, right? If I think of this R I R K, that's like the the outer bounds of my window. So I J K. So like I and K definitely need to be true. I feel I feel like that's one thing we could take advantage of, and we should keep going. While that's true. But there needs to be a space of two in between each one. Not between each one, but there needs to be a space greater than two. So if we start here, and we start here, say three minus one is two, okay. Let's stick an I in there and see, or let's stick a J in there. Let's see if that satisfies it. Yeah, it does. So keep the K going. Three, zero, one. Now this is another three zero one. Okay, cool. If we do this, this is six. That's not good. And this doesn't work if we do it the other way. Yeah, let me let me sort it again. Zero one one three seven nine. Right, I'm only looking. It needs to be at least well. It needs it needs to be less than three, really. So like here, it needs to be. We definitely need to start at least at two, because there needs to be two other variables. So if this was my c, and I say c minus i. We'll put my a here or my zero that's less than three so it can be zero one one i think zero one one is one if i do another one that's less than or equal i mean do all so i'm like like we get here again how can we figure out the next one? Maybe we just need to keep going. I'm going to I'm going to get to my whiteboard. I'll I'll explain what I'm I'll explain to you what I'm doing on the whiteboard just so you have a sense of what I'm writing and you're not completely lost. I'm pretty much going to write the same thing I've already written there. That array that you see there, I'm going to write it in sorted order. Because I'm wondering if I even, do I really need to even keep track of these variables? Like A, A minus B. Let's see, what are the three constraints, right? I minus J needs to be less than or equal to A. J minus K needs to be less than or equal to B. And I minus K needs to be less than or equal to C. 
which means my outer, like, if I ever find c is equal to 3, and we say this is 1, this is 1 here, this could be another 1, this can never be a 1. Maybe we just care about the outer bounds, and we just assume. Like what if I just assumed that the other other things would be true, but i and k need to be? All right, so if I start at c equals 2, that's true, that's true. And then we get here, and I start increasing this, is 6, no. Nope. That's also 6. This is 4. That's bad. And then we get here. So how much? How many did we save for this? This is going to be 4. So that's already going to give us... I was almost hoping that like maybe the outer bound was the only thing that I cared about. So this needs to be at least... Yeah, like if this, if this was array length of 3, right? That means we need to at least start here. Which means if right here, right, like if you imagine that my a is here, right, the 1 minus the 0 is, is 1, that's less than or equal to 3, which means we can add 1. But then we can also take this distance and say, hey, that's like 2 away. Right, so then we increase the C again. And let's say that gives us like two, right? Because we have two numbers in between. Then we increase C again. And now we say, hey, like that still holds true. Let's take the max of that. Now that's three. Now we come here and we say, okay, that's no longer true. Can I increase A to make it true? There's never a point where I can increase A to make that true. But then I come, uh, no, yeah, I come come to here, A, ah, but that's not, this all needs to be less. 0, 1, 1, 3, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 3, 1, 1, 3, 0, 1, and 3, 0, 1. Yeah, we can do 3, 1, 1. 0, 1, 1, 3, 1, 0, and 3, 1, 0. So maybe there's one, there's probably just not one that I'm considering here. So here I can do 1, 1, 0. That's just 1. But as soon as we get here, we can do many. Maybe we can do 3, we can do like all these or however many, is it like, uh, is permutation the right word? Maybe permutation is not the right word. I almost want to, I know I've been doing this more often, but the more I do these, like I, I definitely am going to go through all these questions and you can rest assured that before I ever switch to the next page of LinkedIn, I don't know why I said LinkedIn, before I switch to the next page of the lead code questions, I will always make sure we've done every question on the single page because this one, this one doesn't seem oh, but we're we're making some progress though and I don't like to have to go back all the time. Or not back, but I don't want to like give up midway. X knows the absolute value of X return the number of good triplets. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do this one. Even if it takes a long time, we're 48 minutes in. And if we don't figure it out today, then that just concludes the stream. You know, that's just how these things have to be. Can we sort it though? I think we can sort it. We don't need we just need to know how many of those cases it holds true. Right? Because it's saying that we can create 0, 1, 1. That was one of them, right? Zero, one, one. We can create three, zero, one. Or zero, one, three. Those are all different. And three, one, one. Right, and three, one, one. So if I'm looking at the board, like I have a board right here in front of me, and I drew lines to each 
individual. Actually, this would be a nice thing to draw on like Excala draw here. You can tell I have a lot of stuff I've been messing with. Let's do this. Let's get that array going. Uh, make it extra large zero one one three seven nine zero one one three seven nine. Right, so if I do this, because we can do like one, oh, how, how is it that I can, uh, I can like, wait, I literally did this before and now I'm having trouble doing it. Let's try one more time. All right, I guess we can't do that. So really what I wanted to do is say like, I can do zero, one, one. That's one of them. I can do zero, one, three, or zero, one, three, or one, one, three. I hope you can sort of see that on the screen. I know it's not very clear. Oh, wait a second. We can draw, we can draw here. Yeah, perfect. Let me make this one like green or something. All right, so we can do, oh, okay, that's way too thick. I think that's better. We can do zero one one. That's oh, let's do the thinnest one. We can do zero one one, right? We can do zero one three or zero one three or one one three. These are like our pairs right here, All right? There's nothing else that satisfies satisfies these conditions. So my thing, I'm trying to see how I can use that to my advantage. Is what do I need to know at every step? Why would I ever increase? Hmm. I mean, unless we just say like, we could do something. Like we have our C that starts here. Oh, let's just let's just put A B C, right? Let's just put A. But, oh, why does it keep okay? A, B, C. You know what to be to be like the question says. And let me remove some of this stuff because it's getting a little bit unwieldy here. Let's do I. I J K. Let's do this. So, I J K is like okay. Already this one works. So if this one works. Maybe we should try and expand. Um, K. So K does work. So let's say we one attempt I J K by default. Increase K. Increase K. This is like maybe this could be another one too. If if the K condition is satisfied, then we just also check the other ones. Okay, but now maybe we should also like we're done checking K. So now let's increase i or j. Let's increase j by one. And let's decrease k. Does it work here? Yeah, it does. Okay, we're done. We're maybe done checking i or j. Let's increase i. Let me say, hey, like this is another one too. That's great. And now we say, okay, let's start increasing uh, k now again until we get to like a point where the constraint is satisfied we get all the way to the end and it's not satisfied so it's almost like we're trying to satisfy each constraint one by one before trying the whole loop over again really i guess until k i guess while k is less than the input array so maybe we can say while k is less than the input then r dot length We can increase, so we say, we increase it until we find the next good one. Right, right, okay. So I kind of like where this is going, right? Okay, while well, k is less than r dot length, we increase k while r at k does not satisfy 
uh, let's say C constraint. But this does satisfy the C constraint. Okay, cool. Increase J while R at J does not satisfy the J constraint. Does not satisfy J constraint. I completely uh, forgot to link these as I'm going along with them, so I'll do that now. I put a link to this in the chat. And then finally, we can do increase i while r at i does not satisfy i constraints. So I think we can do that. I kind of like that. So like, you say, okay, increase k while k does not satisfy c constraint. And at every time, we can check constraint. Check constraint and add. We're constantly checking the constraint. Maybe I can just do this. Yep, check constraint, check constraint, and add. Okay. So while k is less than r dot length, it is. Increase k while r dot k, it does satisfy the k constraint. So now we check. Okay, cool. That's awesome. <laughs> and now we say increase j. Okay, while k is less than r dot length. And I'll say while I don't want J to go to, I definitely don't want it to go to one yet. I don't want J to go too far. So I can say uh, while J is less than K minus one, it's not, so leave it in place. So let's increase it while r.j does not satisfy j constraint and j is less than k minus 1 and i is less than j minus 1. So let's see, we check the constraint. Do I even need to do? Okay, yeah, j, right? Check constraint, i, check constraint. But this is still one pair. I don't want to, what language is this? This is JavaScript. I haven't actually written any code for this one yet because uh, as you can hopefully see by the like to dislike ratio, a lot of people don't like it. So I, I'm, I'm planning it out before I go right into it. But thanks for thanks for leaving me a chat message. Always appreciate talking to the community. Yeah, this is JavaScript. But let's see, because now like my thinking is, okay, I'll increase K. I'll check my constraints and I'll add, right? And maybe, I wonder if I should just do it one by, I mean, I think I have to do it one by one, but why would I not, K was it, so like I started off at K, that satisfied the constraints. So let me check J. I don't like I don't want to check this again because j check constraint at add increase does not satisfy as soon as it does add because I would like to almost say okay increase the k this satisfies the c constraint cool does it satisfy i and k so maybe we should say if it satisfies the k constraint, that's cool. So now let's also go to, let's increase k. That satisfies the k, k constraint. It also satisfies the rest. So that's cool. But now we definitely should do j because we can. Does that satisfy? Yes, it does. Does this satisfy? Yes, it does. So I almost feel like I only ever want to increase another, I only want to increase an ij or k if there's like available space to do so. So let's see, maybe my K, maybe my K can be in a for loop. I'm on my whiteboard, so I'll explain to you what I'm doing. I'm gonna define my K. So let's say I have let, let I equals zero, let J is equal to one, and let k equals to two. We know we're going to be giving an array, given an array that's at least length three. 
So we're okay to uh, do this. Now I can say while my k is less than nums.length, right? And this is after this is after we have sorted it, which we might not even need to sort it once I figure this out. But I'm I'm just doing this for now. So we have zero one one three seven nine. I have my i, I have my j, and I have my k. So right in the beginning. I can say if if satisfies constraints, or maybe we only we only move k. So while not satisfies constraints, we will increase k a plus plus. Okay, so I stay there, and now can I, so that means here, when I get to this next piece, it satisfies, so we can add one, let's say add, we can say triplets plus plus, I, I will write all this down shortly on the screen, I, I really need to like, okay, now if, I guess now I can say if, if there is space, so if j is less than k minus 1, I guess for the next one we can say do, yeah, we can just say if j is less than k minus 1, I can say while not satisfies constraints. I guess we can do the same thing here. J plus plus at the end. We can do triplets plus plus. And then let's do the same thing for our i. If i is less than j minus 1, I'll just put three dots here. I'm going to write this out very soon. Because now I think I may have come up with an algorithm, but I want to try it out myself. So while k is less than nums out length, while this does not satisfy the constraints, k plus plus, but it does. So we're going to do triples equals zero. We're going to add one. If j is less than k minus one, which it's not, don't do anything. If i is less than, no, it's not. Okay, cool. And now at the end, we should we should also increase k plus plus right at the end, k plus plus. So then we get here. OK, awesome. k plus plus, it satisfies the constraints. So then we have 2. If j is less than k minus 1, which it is, right? So we've done uh, 0, 1, 1. 0, 1, 1. We did 0, 1, 3. Let's see, this we already accounted for this triplet. That's the that's the piece. Oh, maybe we should do while j is less than k minus 1. We can do while j is less than k k minus 1. J plus plus. And then if satisfies constraint, if satisfies constraints, trip triples plus plus. If satisfies triples plus plus. So let me let me sh like <laughs> let me show you guys a little bit of what I'm doing here, because I I think I may have come up with something, and I'm gonna draw I'm gonna write out a real quick algorithm here. So we're gonna start off with let i equals zero. Let j equals 1 and let k equals 2. Here we want to say while k is less than r dot length, since once that's true, like I don't think we can satisfy our constraint anymore. So I'm going to create a function here called, uh, called satisfied or const 
is constraint satisfied. So just be a function because we're always going to have access to IJK. So here we'll return uh, math.abs of r at i minus r of j less than or equal to a and math dot abs of r of j minus r of k less than or equal to b and math dot abs of r of i minus r of k less than or equal to c right so here i'm thinking of doing while k is less than r dot length while not is constraint satisfied. So we want to increase k while the constraint is not satisfied. As soon as the constraint is satisfied, we'll break out of this. And I'm thinking, let's see, triples equals zero. I'm thinking that here I can immediately increase triples. And then here I can say while j is less than k minus one, J plus plus if is constraint satisfied triples plus plus and then I'm thinking of doing the same thing for I while I is less than J minus one I plus plus if is constraint satisfied triples plus plus just to make sure that I spell this right okay and then at the end, we'll increment our k. And hopefully, at the end, we'll end up with something for triples. So let me remove all this. And let's see what this gives us. This is going to be interesting. So let's imagine we again have our sorted array. That's going to be our input. But then our sorted will be 0, 1, 1. And again, I don't even know if I have to sort this, but that's just how I'm doing it now. So we're going to have i, j, and k. Right? Okay, so while k is less than r dot length, while the constraint is not satisfied, k plus plus. Let's, let's think about what the constraint is, right? The constraint is that uh, the absolute value of r, i minus j, so 1, is less than or equal to 7, which it is. Here, 0 is less than or equal to 2, and then 1 is less than or equal to 3. So the constraint is satisfied right there in the beginning. So we never even get to this. That means that we can do a triple immediately. So triples will be 1. Triples equals 1. And now while j is less than k minus 1, is j less than k minus 1? No, it's not. Is i less than j minus 1? No, it's not. So let's increase k. And now we're here. While k is less than r dot length, it is. While not is constraint satisfied, that means this is another triple, right? And now we say while j is less than k minus 1, we can increase this one now. Now is the constraint satisfied? It is satisfied, so we do triples plus 1. But now j is not less than k minus 1, so we break out of that. And now we can get to our next one, which is... Uh, 0, yeah, uh, i minus 1 less than j it is, so increase this to there. Is the constraint satisfied? We increase triples to 4, and then we do k plus plus. And we keep going along. This is going to keep going all the way, so I guess here we can say if k is greater than or equal to r dot length, then we break. Or we can even just return triples. But let's see how far this gets us. I'm, I'm very curious. I just have to go for it. But 0, 1, 1. Well, let's just run the code and see. 5 and 4. So, oh, you know what, though? I didn't sort it. And I'm not saying that might not even be. Let's just do, let's, let's, let's modify it just for now just to make this part a little bit faster. 
this will just modify the input immediately instead of creating a copy or anything. So still five and four. So why is it that we're getting five? So at any given moment, let me make sure I got the is constraint satisfied part right. So ri minus rj less than or equal to a, rj minus rk less than or equal to b, and ri minus rk less than or equal to c, where x denotes the absolute value of x. Where am I getting the fifth one from? I mean, if we, let's say we keep it like this. I mean, let's just go through it ourselves, right? I, J, K. Let's not forget what A is. A equals 7, B equals 2, and C equals 3. So we already know what like we're doing here. So K is less than R dot length, while not constraint satisfied. So is the constraint satisfied? is uh, this is an absolute difference of three that's less than or equal to seven absolute difference of one less than or equal to two absolute difference of two less than or equal to three so this is true so triples plus plus that's one j none of this works so then we come over here we know that um yeah this is three right this is one less than two this is two okay that's two All right k plus plus that's true triples plus plus that's two this is more so we can increase this j is less than k plus one we increase it one time if is constraint satisfied is the constraint satisfied so this is two less than seven 1 minus 1 is 0, less than or equal to 2, 2 less than or equal to 3, so that's 3. Okay, j is less than k minus 1, no. Let's get to the next one. We'll do this. Is the constraint satisfied? Yes, yes, yes. Half is plus. Is constraint satisfied? Triples plus plus. It's 4. Okay, then we do k plus plus. Let's do it again. So i and j is 1 less than that 1 and 9 is 7 okay so that doesn't work now is there anything that will ever work here though i don't think so right if this if this is never even true it doesn't really matter about the rest so let's see this one well, not this constraint satisfied. This is one less. This is six. No. Well, K. So we're over here. While well, not is constraint satisfied. Maybe we should also. Maybe we should always do this first. I wonder if that's causing some weird issue. Let's see if that fixes it. Five and four. It's very interesting. Oh, wait a second. We're only breaking here. That's gonna that's gonna break out of this intermediary loop. What if we just return triples here? Four and four. Now that's is that with sorting? That's with no sorting. Let's run it with all the test cases. Four zero four zero. Is this gonna be it? Let's see. Moment of truth, everyone. All right. Wow. I was really far off on this one. Oh wait. No, that's submissions. Oh no. Wait. I lost it.
go back to it. Triples, solution. I really want to get to the 50 questions tonight, so I'll probably keep going. I'm not going to stop it at the one hour, 14 minute mark. Okay. Let's uh, see. Let's let's do sorting. Let's see if that fixes anything. Array dot sort. A B A minus B. We already know the submission here. This was a wrong answer. Twelve out of ninety-two cases. So I was pretty far off here. Input five eight one. Four zero four twelve. Oh, I see. So the sorting is not really the matter here, or the sorting is not a problem. Four zero zero four zero twelve. I got one before, but let us see. That is definitely interesting. Five eight one. That's my ABC. Five eight one. A equals five. B equals eight. C equals one. Let triples equal zero. Let me just line all this up and let's start again. I J K. Right, A, B, C, okay, cool. So is the constraint satisfied? So this is four less than five. This is four less than eight. This is zero less than one, so that's one. Okay, we don't do anything here anymore. Um, while not, or we do increase this. So let's see, while not constraint satisfied, is it satisfied? We have, oh, did I? K is greater or equal than array.length return triples. No, I think that's fine. So this is four, that's fine. This is zero, that's fine. This is four. That does not work. You see, that's the thing though, because even though even though that doesn't work, I shouldn't, I shouldn't just like yeah, I shouldn't, I shouldn't just always, I don't think I should always increase uh, K immediately because I'm missing out on other ones that could work. So really it should be, maybe it should just be the same thing as this, like increase K while it's satisfied. If it's not... Well, let's say we get to here, seven, this is what? This is four, that's fine. This is zero, that's fine, but this is four. So we got there, while not constraint is satisfied. Maybe we should just do while constraint is satisfied. While constraint is satisfied. Maybe we can just do the triples in here. Or maybe, maybe, let me think about something, because it works for these, right? Like, we just do, while k is less than r dot length, what if I just did the same thing here? Like, while k is less than r dot length, we can do if constraint is satisfied. Triples plus plus k plus plus. Maybe we remove this one here. So we start here. K is less than r dot length. Constraint is satisfied. Triples plus plus. We come here. K is less than. Or maybe even even better, we sort of abstract this, not abstract, but 
condense it, refactor it, and just do these things. So if k is less than r dot length and is constraint satisfied, it is triples plus plus. So here we're at one and k plus plus. If k is less than r dot length, constraint is not satisfied. Okay, cool. J is less than k minus one and is constraint satisfied. Maybe we do the same thing here. We do the same thing here. Copy this, do that. It makes a little more sense perhaps. So we get here, it's not satisfied. Then we come here, J is less than K minus one and the constraint is satisfied. We should also count this one though. Let's see. So J is less than K minus one. Is the constraint satisfied? Um, hmm. This one's a little bit different, I think, actually. Because this is four, that's okay. This is zero, that's fine, but then that's four. But that doesn't mean that there can be, I think we can actually do J is less than K minus one, if maybe this actually should be how it was before. J plus plus plus, else J plus plus. And here maybe we can do j is less than k. j is less than k here. So now maybe we can say if constraint is satisfied, is it? 0 less than 5, 4 less than 8, 4. It's not satisfied. j plus plus. Then we get to that next place, which is a little bit odd. Because now everything. Now they're all bunched up together. But I guess that's fine because I'll eventually end up putting. Hmm. So what happens here? I think here I maybe want to keep it to how it was before. If this triples plus plus. And maybe we'll just say i less than j. Okay, is the constraint satisfied here? Zero, four, no it's not. But we can do I plus plus. And J and K are kind of together. Is the constraint satisfied here? Do we move all of these together once? This, this doesn't seem right, J plus plus. It seems weird to move them all together because like what if they're all like if they're all this right now okay let's see is this like what does this give us for the sample test cases if anything if it doesn't break three one four zero how about the one that we got wrong. Let's run this one. Three, one, five, four, zero, twelve. So still a little bit off. I definitely feel like we're making progress though. It's more about knowing when to increase them. While j is less than k minus 1. When is it that I want to check the constraint? I only ever want to check a constraint, maybe every iteration, every, every, every like iteration of the outer broader, of the outer loop should move these positions in some way, should move these pointers in some way. And anytime a pointer moves, Maybe that's a good time to check uh, the constraint any time a pointer moves. Maybe not, and maybe not before it moves. 
is if I do j and then I do j plus 1, well, j is less than, you see, we never, we never count that. I think because we've been on this one for a while, let's, let's table this one. I'll add it to my list. Let's revisit it. We've, we made a lot of good progress here. There have been other questions that we've worked on during these streams that I don't get to the first day. And then I get, you know, I come back the next day and I solve it. So I really do want to get to these 50. We're so, so close. Let's see. I think we're two away. Yeah, we're still two away. So let's see if we can find some good ones to work on. Count equal and divisible pairs in an array. Okay, nice. So this is a good question, apparently. Given a zero index integer array, nums of length n, and an integer k, return the number of pairs i, j, where zero is less than i, less than j, less than n, such that nums at i equals nums at j, and i times j is divisible by k. All right. That's a mouthful. So let's see. Nums at zero is equal to nums six, and that's also divisible by two. Can we just find where all the pairs are? We're always going to need pairs, right? I feel like we're always going to need pairs. That's like one thing that we can start to do. How can I quickly get a list of all my different pairs? And maybe anytime I see it, I save, I save the coordinates. Now, are there only ever going to be pairs? Well, I mean, that doesn't make sense, right? Like maybe we can say here, like we have a three at zero. We have a one at one. We have a two. We have a two at two and a two at three. So that's one pair. Uh, we have a two, two, three, we have a two at four. We have a one at five, that's another pair, and a three at six. Four, k equals two, there are four pairs. Nums two equals three, oh, then three and four. So maybe we don't even care about, let's see. That's a nice way. It's a nice way that we can solve this. Can sorting help us here? Might. One, one, two, 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 three, three. This is a pair. So if they're ever the same, not the same, this is the same, this is the same. Right? Like, this one is the same as this one. That's cool. That's a pair. It's one. And then one times six is zero, which is divisible by two. Okay. And then, yeah, can we can we actually do that? Let's see. Const sorted nums equals nums dot sort a b a minus b. We let i equal zero, i less than sorted nums dot length, i plus plus. We just want the ones that are next to each other that are equal to each other. Right, so maybe we can just start at one. If sorted nums of i is equal to sorted nums of i minus one, And now we say, and i times j is divisible by k. So just like even numbers, if it's evenly divisible, is that what it means? So if if i times i times i minus one modulo k, uh, modulo k equals equals zero, then let pairs equal zero, pairs plus plus, 
Maybe that will work. I think the sorting helps us out here. Although, I'm sure there's a faster way to do it without sorting. That's like my gut feeling. Two and four. So already we're off. Let's kind of go through this again. One, one, two, 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 three, three. Start at one. So sorted nums of i equals sorted nums of i minus one. That is true. And if i times i minus one, I think that's where we need to, uh, yeah, it's like a whole thing happening here. If i times i minus one, modulo k equals equals zero. Really have to wait to be able to run four and four. Again, I'm almost certain that the sorting is not the optimal solution. There's got to be a way to do it linear, linearly. Four and zero, four and zero. Let's submit this and see. Seven and three, and expected eighteen. Are we not? It should all be next to each other, though. Seven. K is the number. So when it's divisible by K, zero, six, eight, two, one. There's no value in nums that's repeated. There are no pairs that meet all the requirements. But is it, I guess it's more, mm, I see. It's more than them just being next to each other. It's how many we have seen. Maybe instead of this, maybe it's, maybe if they're all next to each other, and then we also take, let's see. I think I know something else that we can do. I think there's something else we can do here. Let's actually reset this. Put this let's put the amount the frequency of each we have two threes we have one we have two ones we have three twos right so like at any given moment when i'm at three how many of these have i seen before oh i can say okay have i seen have i seen a three before when i'm at this three no i haven't so I should save that there's a three at zero. Have I seen another one? No, but there is a one at one. Have I seen a two? No, but there is a two at two. Have I seen a two? Yes, it's at two. So I can say three minus two. Okay, cool. That's great. Um, I'll do the calculation for that one and then I'll save it. And then when I get to this next two, I can say, well, I've seen two other twos. And now I could go through the array here and say, are all these divisible? Let's see. I've seen one there and I've seen one there. JS, yep, JavaScript. Worried boat 6197, yeah, this is JavaScript. Equal and divisible pairs. I know I've seen two. And I need an, I need the numbers that are divisible by K. Should I only ever add? So if this is a, hmm, maybe I only want to ever add Maybe I only ever want to add the indices that are divisible by k. i times j is divisible by k. So it's not only that I've seen one before, it's that I've seen one before that if I multiply it with the current j, it will be divisible by k. But I'll still need to look at all the ones that I've gone through.
And if I sort it, if we sort it here like we did before, one, one, two, 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 three, three. What do we get from this? IJ is divisible by K. What, I mean, if we just had, hmm. Would we get anything if we started backwards? I might have to wrap up the stream. I know I'm just so close. I'm so close to the 50, but it is midnight where I am currently. <laughs> a little, getting a little bit tired, but that's, that's, let's see, let's see. If there's any, if there's like some of these that I've done before that I know are maybe a little bit easy, we can just go through them. I think unique Morse code words is pretty good. Uh, remove outermost parentheses. This one's a good one. Or actually, apparently it's terrible. But I say good because, well, at least I haven't been able to do it. Replace all digits with characters. Okay, yeah, I've done these before. But I think maybe we'll do it early in the morning. We'll do a stream. We'll get back to it. I'll, I'll want to give these a solid look over because I'm, you know, I was I, like, the point is I was going through all these and really like solving every single one of them. So I don't want to leave too many empty or too many halfway done. So probably what I'll do is maybe I'll stop for tonight. And then tomorrow when we do the stream again, we'll come back and we'll look at some of these or we can just have them. Well, tomorrow is Saturday, which is when I'd say I do the weekly roundup. So I already have that list that has been compiling. Yeah, my lists. Yes, yeah, so we have a cover a couple of different questions here that I want to look at again. And we can talk about them and see what we've learned and, and get some intuition behind that. So I think I'm gonna wrap up the stream for tonight since it's yeah, it's already midnight where I am, so it's it's getting pretty late. But just as a quick reminder for anyone that's watching, I upload all these streams to my YouTube channel. I have my channel introduction on there. I, I put the link of the channel higher up in the stream chat if you want to go ahead and click on it and subscribe. Pretty much this introduction will explain to you my intent behind all this that I'm doing. But short story is I want to go through all the easy questions, all the medium questions, and all the hard questions one by one. And hopefully it can be an easy way for you to sort of have a, a buddy to listen alongside as you're working through these questions. And I mean, in the past, in the past six days, we've done almost 50. So if you think about it, you know, if you're trying to get some liquid questions under your belt, you just got to watch a couple of videos and all of a sudden you're 50 questions deep. I think that's a great way to start. So with that being said, appreciate everyone that caught the stream today. Tomorrow we'll do our first weekly roundup, probably followed by like a normal stream. The weekly roundup will just consist of me going through my list of questions I've compiled throughout the week. And then we'll do like a normal stream where we just continue with the rest of the questions. So thanks again, everyone. Good night or good morning. See you all later.